Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a leak code problem called find subsequence of length k with the largest sum. It sounds a bit complicated, but don't worry, we'll break it down step by step. Okay, so here's the goal. We're given a list of numbers, which the problem calls nums, and a single number, kai mufiv. Our mission is to find a subsequence, which is just a fancy way of saying we pick some numbers from the original list without changing their order, that has exactly k numbers in it, and gives us the biggest possible sum. Then we return that subsequence. Let's walk through an example to make this super clear. Imagine our list of numbers is negative 1, negative 2, 3, and 4, and k is 3. We need to pick three numbers that, when added up, give the biggest sum. A quick look tells us the largest three numbers are negative 1, 3, and 4. If we add them, we get 6. Now the crucial part, is this a valid subsequence? Let's check their original order. Negative 1 appears first, then 3, then 4. Perfect. The order is preserved, so our answer is the list containing negative 1, 3, and 4. So what's our first thought? To get the largest sum, it seems obvious we should just pick the k largest numbers from the list, right? That part is correct. But, we can't just return them sorted from biggest to smallest. We have to return them in the order they appeared in the original list. That's the trick. How do we find the largest numbers, but also remember where they came from? This leads us to a better idea. What if we keep track of each number's original position? We can pair up each number with its index. You know, its spot in the original list. This way, we can sort the numbers to find the biggest ones, but we won't lose track of their original homes. And here's how that looks in Python. It might seem like a lot at first glance, but it's really just a few main steps. We're going to walk through each part so it makes perfect sense. First up, this line. All we're doing here is creating a new list. But instead of just having the numbers, each item in our new list is a small pair. The first element of the pair is the original index, or position. And the second element is the number itself. So for every number in the input list, we're basically tagging it with its original location. Okay, now for the sorting. We take our list of pairs and sort it. But how? We tell the sort function to look only at the second item in each pair, which is the number itself. And we sort them from largest to smallest. After this step, the k pairs at the very top of our list will be the ones containing the k largest numbers. Now that we've found our top k pairs, we're not done yet. They're currently sorted by their value, not by their original position. So we take just those top k pairs, and we sort them again. But this time, we sort them based on the first item in the pair, which is the original index we saved earlier. This magically puts them back into the correct subsequence order. This is the final, easy step. Our list of pairs is now perfectly ordered. It has the k largest numbers, and they are sorted according to their original positions. All that's left is to build our final result list by pulling out just the number, the second element, from each pair. So how fast is this approach? Well, the main work we do is sorting. First we sort the whole list, which takes n log n time, where n is the number of items in the input. Then we sort the smaller list of k items, which is k log k time. Since n is bigger than k, the overall time complexity is dominated by that first sort, making it big O of n log n cores. For space, we created that extra list of pairs, so that takes up big O of n extra memory. So to recap, the key to solving this problem was realizing two things. First, to get the largest sum, you absolutely need the k largest numbers. Second, to handle the subsequence rule, you must save the original positions of those numbers. By pairing values with their indices, we could sort to find the best numbers, and then sort again to restore the original order. A pretty neat trick. Hope that walkthrough was helpful. If you found this explanation clear, please hit that like button, subscribe for more leak code breakdowns, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments. And of course, the Boba Fund is always open for donations. Thanks for watching, and happy coding!